Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. So today I'm going to do a step-by-step -step process tutorial on this binding method. This is called twine binding. I think there might be some other names for it, but I know it um, as twine binding. So the reason why I like this binding so much is that you uh, don't need to sew the signatures into the book. Another reason is that wherever you open your book, it lays completely flat and I really like that. So it just lays really, really flat. Another thing is you can remove pages if you, if you want to, if you need to. And you can also add any pages. Unlike in a sewn signature, you can't actually be adding more pages. But with this type of binding, you, you can just slide extra pages into a journal if you need to. Now this journal isn't complete, but you will see that there's quite a lot of space here so that you can add more pages as you go and you can add embellishments and stuff like that. So let us begin. But before we do, I have my steps here, so we'll go through that together. I just wanted to say one thing. Um, the only con that I can tell with this binding method is that you want your spine to be very sturdy. So, and that's part of step one where you're preparing your cover and your signatures. So let's say, for example, this, uh, I'm just going to take this cover just to show you something. Can you see here how this spine is not very sturdy? So that means when I'm wrapping my cord around, because it needs to be somewhat tight, you might find that this bends in and that's not a good look. I mean, it might not bother you, but it's just one of the things that you need to keep in mind. So what I did when I was preparing my covers for these journals is, uh, this is just a Reader's Digest cover that I used. So what I did on the inside is I actually glued an extra piece of cardstock, uh, thick cardstock or chipboard I think it's called, just really thick card. And so that way I have this really thick part here and it's very, very sturdy and it's not going to bend. All right, so let's let's just start this might look a little bit complicated but I broke it down completely so it's very easy to follow okay so first thing you need to do like I said is you need to prepare your cover I've got my cover ready here and you need to prepare your signatures so I've got my signatures here I've got five signatures and I've numbered each one just so I know that if if you want them in a particular order, I just numbered mine. This is, uh, I can very easily remove this. These are just sticky notes so that I know in what order they go. Also, before I'm binding, I did stamping. I added lace and any sewing. This, these are the steps that I usually follow. So my signatures are now ready to go into my cover. So we have prepared this, the cover and the signatures. Next thing we need to do is you want to choose your binding cord that you want to use so you can use twine binding you can use elastic if you wish you can use i'm just using uh i'm not even sure what this is called it's a string that i have in my stash okay so you want to measure your cord i'm just going to open now this might be a little bit hard to see but i'll try and show it up close so you need to measure your cord and you need to do length of the spine for the total number of signatures times two. So I have five signatures. So I need to do length of the spine. This is length of the spine times two. And then plus two more lengths to tie off. So when I'm tying my bow here, I need that extra piece of string. So for example, for my five signatures, I need 12 lengths of the spine. 5 times 2, 5 signatures times 2 is 10, and then 10 plus 2 is 12. If you're doing 6 signatures, you need to, 6 by 2 is 12, and then you add another 2, and then you have 14. So for my example over here, I've got 5 signatures, I need to measure 12 lengths of the spine. So here we go, 1, 2, three, 12. And then I just had a little bit of extra, just in case. I like to have extra rather than not enough. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we are now wrapping it around the spine. So I'm going to hold, hold one full length, 
hope that you can see this. So one full length of the spine and I'm going to hold it with my thumb. And then I'm going to start wrapping. So let's go from here. And you begin wrapping around the spine. And as you are wrapping, you want to make sure that your strings are not crossing each other. So. I might just change hands. So I'm still holding my string here. I'll hold it with this thumb. And I want to wrap five times. So this is two, three. Four, five. As you're wrapping, you want to make sure that uh, you're wrapping tight, but not too tight because you still need to slide your signatures in. So, and you just need to double check that you have the correct number of strings inside. So for my five signatures, I'm just going to hold my strings here in place. So for my five signatures, I need five strings on the inside. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So that's five strings. So that's perfect. Okay, now let's go to the next one. I'm just going to move this to the side. So now we need to twist or wrap the two loose ends. This is what I'm calling loose ends over here. I've got one here, one here. So my left hand is here, my right hand is here, and I'm just going to go over the right over the left. So that's wrapped around. I'm holding it down with my pinky. And now we need to pull one of the loose ends. So I'm going to pull this one. You can either pull that one. doesn't matter which one. And you want to move it underneath all of the other strings. So I'm holding it here where it's twisted around each other. And now I just want to move this string under all of these strings here. I hope that you can see this. So can you see how that string is now under all of the other strings? And now you will have both of the loose ends on the same side. So if you want to have this in the middle, you can. You would need to do your twist in the middle. You can do it up here, wherever you want. So you choose where you want your twist. Okay, so now that I have both of my loose strings on the same side, I need to tie a knot. Very simple. And here we go. So I've tied the knot. How easy is that? So as you will see, I didn't worry about where my strings are sitting because I'm going to go ahead and space them evenly now. The only thing that I needed to worry about is that none of my strings are overlapping on the inside. Okay, so now once you tie the knot, so you can go ahead and you can decorate whatever you want to do here now, or you can actually do that after your journal is bound. So if you're going to have something that's sticking out or a button or something like that, um, you might, when your book is sitting down, if there's something underneath, let's just grab a hair clip, your book is not sitting flat. So... Uh, that's another thing you, you might want to keep in mind. So you might want to have something something flat there. If you're going to have beads, don't put really chunky beads because they are going to be in the way. You can't actually move them away unless you have your little knot up here and then you might be able to move the beads up when the book is open so it's not in the way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tie a bow here. And then when it, what you can do, and what I will do with this as well, I think I just might have a bow here. I don't think I'll add other things to it. So I might add a little bit of glue so that my um, binding doesn't come undone because this is quite, this string tends to unravel easily or come undone. So I might add some glue there once I'm finished with binding the book. Okay, so now before you start actually putting your signatures in, you want to space your strings evenly. So I'm just going to try and space them evenly. You can do this after you've bound the book too and you probably will need to as well but I like to space them evenly at this stage as well. 
so that I have enough space to slide my signatures in. I hope I didn't do this too tight. Here we go. So now that's nice and even. Okay. And the next thing we need to do is slide the signatures in one by one and we're working from the spine towards the edges of the book. I'm just going to move this aside. I will bring both of these um, back side by side if you wanted to take a, a screenshot or a photo. Okay, so this is the front of my book, which means that I want my first signature in the first, you know, I want to make sure they go in order. So front of my book and then I have my first signature. So I'm going to start with my first string. So I open my signature to the middle. Another option is you might want to sew these in or put them through your sewing machine. The only thing is then you won't be able to be adding more pages and you won't be able to take pages out. So this part can be a little bit tricky. Um, especially as you're building, as you're putting more and more signatures in, it might be a little bit difficult to slide them in. So you open it up and then you just want to slide it in. Make sure you grab all of your pages. Okay, so I'm finding uh, this is a little bit tricky for me because I've got these edges that are not straight and I've got some lace. So it was just getting caught a little bit on this ridge here, but just be patient with it as you're working through. So the next one is signature number two. I want to make sure that it's the right way up. So And now let's begin with our third signature. Okay, and now we're going to do the last signature. So if you're using uh, elastic binding, this will be even easier. And that's it. The book is bound. It's so easy, so simple and so quick. So they just be with, you know, as you're sliding your signatures in, you, you just need to be really patient um, to make sure that none of your pages are folding as you're sliding it through. Also, you don't want to have, like I did minimal embellish, embellishing prior to um, binding it into the book. If you had lots of embellishing and lots of things sticking out, it would get caught in as you're sliding them through so i would leave that all of that embellishing to last um, so of course the last step is to congratulate yourself on a job well done this is so easy quick and simple and i hope you give it a go let me know what you think and i'll see you in my next video bye